cloning, the creation of offspring in which the genetic material, or DNA, is exactly the same as the parent. Now, what does that mean? It means that the offspring is going to have exactly the same traits as the parents, including physical appearance or personality. There are two main categories of cloning, molecular and reproductive cloning. Molecular cloning is a process often used in labs that specialize in genetic engineering and involves creating exact replicas of pieces of DNA. This replication is carried out through plasmids or small circular pieces of DNA in bacteria. When the bacteria reproduce, they reproduce the plasmid and the DNA inside of it as well. However, you might be more familiar with the idea of reproductive cloning. Reproductive cloning is a type of cloning that occurs when an entire organism is cloned. The most famous example of reproductive cloning was that of Dolly in 1996. Dolly was a sheep born July 5th due to the work of scientist Ian Wilmot in Edinburgh, and she was the first clone created from an adult mammal. She was created by removing the DNA of one sheep from an adult cell and placing it into another cell in the uterus of a surrogate sheep. When Dolly was born, her DNA was identical to that of the first donor sheep. <coughs> However, reproductive cloning is not just the cloning of other animals. Similar cloning techniques are used for therapies and treatments without risk of rejection in medical practices, and also in food production with GMOs. Even before the discovery of artificial cloning using genetic engineering by biologists, organisms have been cloning themselves. For example, some species of starfish can not only grow back limbs after having them cut off, but will also grow an entirely new starfish from the severed limb. Since this second starfish was grown from a limb of the original starfish, the two actually have the exact same DNA. This means that the second starfish is a clone of the first. Biologists have managed to harness the technology behind cloning in a process called propagation. Propagation is a gardening technique that allows one to take a piece of a plant and with the right conditions, grow a second plant that is an exact copy of the original plant. What is so special about this method of cloning is that it is done in home gardens and biology labs alike. In today's experiment, I will lead you through a demonstration of micropropagation using cauliflower. Although you can micropropagate most plants, cauliflower reacts very well. Through this experimental micropropagation, you will also be able to observe and engage with the concept of reproductive cloning, as each new cauliflower plant that you create is a perfect copy of the mother plant it was cut from. For this experiment, you will need a 1 liter container with 100 milliliter incremented measurements, 1 gallon of distilled water, 15 grams of sugar, a spatula, a whisk, a kitchen scale, a digital pH meter, 4 grams of nutrient agar, and 3 grams of Murashige and Skook, or MS, medium. Murashige and Skook medium contains the nutrients that the cauliflower will need to grow, and agar serves to thicken the mixture. Together, these two ingredients create what can be compared to the soil plants grow in outside. You will also need a small glass bowl, one small carving knife, a 10 milliliter syringe, tweezers, a sharpie, measuring spoons, and a small plastic cutting sheet. You will also need detergent, household bleach, baking soda, vinegar, and a long poker. In addition, you will need 30 flat-bottomed resealable culture tubes, a small container with a spout, roughly one cup in size, two mason jars, two medium-sized pots, along with a well-ventilated stovetop, a rag, soap, and paper towels. Of course, you will need one head of cauliflower, as fresh and healthy looking as possible, along with a large cutting board. Before you begin this experiment, you will need to clear your workspace. Take all appliances out of the workspace and store them until the experiment is over. Additionally, clean all countertops with soap and water. Take a clear plastic box and trace two circles. These circles should be wide enough to fit the scientist's arms comfortably up to the shoulders. 
I found roughly four inches across to be comfortable for myself. Then, cut the circles and cover the sharp surfaces with duct tape. Using 30% bleach solution and a rag, clean the insides of the box thoroughly. Make sure to use gloves and avoid inhaling fumes as much as possible. Leave the box to the side until it is necessary later on in the procedure. You should make the medium in the one liter container. Pour 400 milliliters of distilled water into the container. Measure three grams of the MS medium using an aluminum foil weigh boat and the kitchen scale. Pour the powdered medium into the water and whisk until fully incorporated. Measure 15 grams of sugar. Whisk the sugar into the mixture until fully incorporated. Add distilled water to the mixture until five milliliters is reached. Using the digital pH meter, adjust the pH until 5.8 is reached. If the pH is too high, add vinegar with a syringe a few drops at a time, as is seen here. If the pH is too low, add baking soda a small pinch at a time. Continue to mix the solution as the pH is adjusted to make sure the vinegar or baking soda is fully incorporated. Make sure to calibrate the pH meter beforehand. Transfer the liquid mixture to a pot on the stove and heat lightly. Measure four grams of nutrient agar using a weigh boat and a kitchen scale. Add the agar to the mixture and mix until fully incorporated. The mixture should be a clear, pale yellow color. Using a ruler and sharpie, make markings on each of the 30 tubes at five centimeters of height. Once the agar is fully incorporated, Pour roughly a quarter cup of the still warm medium into the small spouted container. Leave the rest of the medium on the stove while still heating gently. Uncap a few culture tubes at a time and pour the medium to the 5 cm line. Seal each tube lightly and set to the side. Continue to refill the small spouted container with medium from the heated pot and pour into the tubes until all tubes are full or the medium runs out. Fill a pot with approximately three-fourths full of water. Set the water on the stove to a boil. While waiting for the water to boil, put all filled culture tubes into a colander. Place the tubes in the colander in the boiling water for 20 minutes. This step serves to sanitize the medium and the tubes. Set another pot filled up three-fourths of the way with water to boil. Place the knife, poker, and tweezers into the water. Let sit for 20 minutes and then remove with tongs. Place all materials onto a paper towel and then cover it with another paper towel to keep clean. Wash the cauliflower thoroughly under running water with hand soap. Clean the plastic cutting sheet with soap and water and then place the washed cauliflower on top of it. Using the sterile knife, cut three or four large florets from the bulb of the cauliflower. From these large florets, cut small florets roughly half a centimeter across and set to the side. Make sure to cut more florets than necessary in case some become contaminated. Using a mason jar, fill with water and a half pump of detergent. Shake until the water is foamy with soap. Place all florets into the water detergent mixture and shake for 20 minutes. Using another mason jar, create a 1% bleach mixture. Remove the florets from the detergent and rinse with tap water. Place the florets into the bleach mixture and mix for two minutes. Remove the florets from the bleach mixture and rinse with distilled water. Suspend the cauliflower in distilled water as preparation for the next step. In the plastic box, place the mason jar with cauliflower along with another mason jar filled with distilled water. In addition, place a large container alongside the two mason jars. This container will serve as waste. This plastic box is now considered a sterile space. Make sure to wear gloves while working in the container to minimize contamination. Open the mason jar with the cauliflower and pour off the water into the trash container. Fill the cauliflower jar with enough distilled water from the other jar to cover the cauliflower and swirl lightly for one minute. Repeat the same process, pouring off the water from the cauliflower and refilling with new distilled water until there's no water left, at least three times. At this point, the cauliflower is considered sterile and should be treated as such. Remove the empty mason jar and put in a test tube, tweezers, and long metal poker. Uncap the culture tube. 
choose a florette from the group with tweezers and drop it into the tube. If necessary, use the flat part of the tweezers to push the florette through the opening. Then, use the poker to submerge the florette halfway into the medium, stem facing downwards. Seal the tube and remove from the plastic box. Continue to pass in tubes one by one until there are none remaining. It is important to remember to seal the tubes before taking them out to keep them as sterile as possible. Place the tubes on a windowsill where they will receive indirect sunlight for most of the day. Roots should appear within six weeks. Contamination for some of the plants is likely. If some of the plants become contaminated, as can be seen here, remove the test tube from the bunch and place into a cardboard box. Once sealed with tape, that box can be discarded into the trash.